The End Is Nigh is an all-new tough-as-nails platformer by Edmund McMillan and Tyler Glale. McMillan notably having created Super Meat Boy, which many consider to be THE definitive tough-as-nails platformer. And with that in mind, while it's easy to think The End Is Nigh is a spiritual successor of sorts to Super Meat Boy, they are indeed both difficult platformers, but they play very differently. Super Meat Boy had a heavy focus on speed, being able to achieve very high acceleration during play, and it had a large amount of level design utilized wall jumping as a primary game mechanic. Whereas The End Is Nigh has neither of those things, Tyne is a lot more focused on precise movement at a much slower pace than Meat Boy, with quick reflexes still necessary for survival. If you were to play Meat Boy and then Tyne, you'd be really jarred when you find that Ash does not move anywhere similarly to Meat Boy. The main character, Ash, a blob of tumors and bone, is apparently the last physically alive creature on a post-apocalyptic Earth. He busies himself by playing video games. He enjoys classic retro games the most, which is where the story begins. His last game cartridge ends up breaking, becoming unplayable. Much to his dismay, he decides to build a friend because, hell, why not? And so he quests to find a head, a body, and a heart to form what I suppose could be considered a friend? The game has you run and jump through levels, each one designed to be a trial for you to pass through without dying. If you do die, you return to the entrance of the level where you must retry your attempt at survival. While your save file does have a death counter, there are actually no lives in the end is nigh, allowing for an endless amount of experimenting ways to go about passing through a level. In addition to running and jumping, you can cling to the tops of ledges and hooks, and jump against them giving you some further jump distance. You can also drop onto these ledges by holding the down button while running off the platform. This is assigned to the shoulder buttons on controllers as well, and holding the drop button in the air will drop you down faster too. These are the mechanics of The End Is Nigh, a fairly simple control scheme with difficult and complex level design. As you progress through The End Is Nigh, you are accompanied by fantastic heavy metal remixes of classic compositions that make up the game's soundtrack from Ridiculon. It's hilarious if you know of these classical compositions when you realize a particular piece has been remixed for this game into a hardcore rock anthem accompanying your many deaths. It's a great soundtrack that really adds to each area's atmosphere, and a lot of the tracks are just fun to listen to by themselves. The game is structured into areas containing 15 to 25 levels, or rooms. Once you reach a new area, you are able to warp to the first level of that newly discovered area. Each level has entrances and exits that lead off into the previous or next level within that given area without any transitions, which is why they could be described as rooms. For the most part, this creates a linear path from level to level, but some of the later areas play around with this structure, having you backtrack or return with a key to previous levels in order to reach later levels. What makes The End Is Nice so fun is the obvious handcrafted feel of each level. Despite the game containing a minimal amount of obstacles and mechanics, each and every level is a unique and different trial, ensuring multiple deaths from the lack of pattern and similarity. While you might have finally figured out how to make your way through one level after 10 deaths, you have to start from scratch figuring out the level after that, which might kill you 20 times. It's almost like a puzzle, 600 different platforming puzzles. And each and every level is smart in its design, preventing you from racing from start to finish in a straight line. I'd find myself not annoyed but impressed with the foresight Ed and Tyler have predicting how players would approach each level, punishing players going for what would appear to be the easy routes to the end of a level. You oftentimes have to stop for a second and look for an opening to slip between projectiles, or wait to time a jump properly. In other situations, you have to read the whole levels quickly as rising lava or poisonous gas in water will rush you and prevent you from being able to stop. Tyne has no RNG, and levels are reset after each death, ensuring consistency, with the correct path always being available in each level in the exact same way, making the game super speedrunner friendly. You always know that even if you've died more times than you can count, you will eventually figure out how to succeed, and solving that platformer puzzle is extremely rewarding each and every time. That's the gist of the main game, but as expected, the end is nigh is loaded with secrets and collectibles. For starters, each level has its own collectible tumor, which must be picked up, and then the level must be left in order to truly obtain that tumor, otherwise it will return to its original position. Some tumors will be rather easy to collect, with it being directly within your main path. Others will require you to approach the level in completely different ways than the natural path. There's even a few that require you to use the level after the one the tumor is in to reach that previous tumor. 
I really like that all you have to do is exit the level, meaning reaching the next level is not the only way to collect the tumor. You can also return to the previous level. Some levels have you intentionally backtrack to obtain the tumor, as the tumor, or objects that allow you to reach it, are not triggered to appear until you are at the end of the level in the first place. Furthermore, there are secret levels within each area. You find them above and below particular levels, typically requiring you to drop into a pit that would normally kill you, or squeeze through a cranny that doesn't even look like you're meant to pass through it. If you have an inkling that there's an entrance to a secret level, odds are it's an entrance to a secret level. What they are specifically is little one-offs from the main game that contain a mega tumor, which is a value of 5 normal tumors. They're not much more than 2 or 3 extra rooms and never lead into anything more than finding a mega tumor, with the gate at the end returning you back to the main path. But they will occasionally have NPCs you can talk to, if you can reach them that is, which provide dialogue and lore for those interested, but unlike the mega tumors are not necessary to interact with. Due to being placed in difficult to reach locations, however, it can be a bit of a personal accomplishment to reach these NPCs. Tumors and Mega Tumors are added to your total, which is always visible in the upper left. Other than being a collectible, they are also used to enter special areas called the Future, which require a certain number of tumors to access via entering giant blobs holding Roman numeral signposts. Tumors are used for something else in the very late game, but that's something I suggest finding out on your own. Another collectible within the game is cartridges. You discover new, unbroken game cartridges during your adventure. One within each area found in the most difficult to discover secret levels, and one within each future area, all of which can then be played on your home console back at the first level. Cartridge games are basically retro versions of the real End is Nigh levels, but they play no differently. Other than being an 8-bit aesthetic, the cartridges are essentially half of the entire game's level count. The ones you find in the main areas are games with satirical titles, parody, and classic games including Final Fantasy and Metal Gear. These cards are based off the area you found them in and play 8-bit versions of those area tracks. You are provided with some extra lives and one continue chance, meaning you actually have to be careful about dying in the cartridge games. The cards you find in the future areas are especially challenging for having no lives or continues at all. They must be completed deathless. There are also some glitch carts you find in the very late game, which also parody old games and contain a glitched aesthetic in both visuals and soundtrack. These ones have especially difficult level design, but thankfully have no game overs or lives at all. The implication being that, because they are glitched, the lives counter is broken, I guess. And there you have it. The End is Nigh might not be as ambitious as Super Meat Boy was for its time, but it does provide a brand new challenging platformer that plays very differently, offering just as much fun with its own unique platforming trials. But hey, that's just my perspective.